Okay, so I'm starting work on a herringbone style coffee table made out of reclaimed bowling alley maple. Uh, so what I got here is some maple that I'm taking apart and denailing. You can see some pieces of the nails. This is one I've already denailed. I've already got the bowling alley wax plane down off of it. And uh, taking it in a little jig here on the miter saw and cutting it up into little four inch blocks. And then I'm going to arrange them into a herringbone pattern and glue them all up and make a nice little coffee table. So you can see what this bowling alley material looks like before it's all broken down. Got some of it here playing down. So you got some nice material to work with. cut for the herringbone pattern but we only have one problem the blocks won't butt into each other without a notch in the end of both sides so that means we've got a lot of notching to do and we want to do it as efficiently as possible so i got my router set up and i got all these blocks clamped in a big long clamp and i have a nice little bit that i'm going to take a pass through here and cut all into the maple here and that allows me to set my block in there at a right angle and I have a little bit of room to play and we'll still be able to keep the top surface flush so that's how our herringbone pattern works it's just a bunch of right angles so we've got our channel plowed in there and we're gonna just keep on doing this to every other block I got in that garbage can and I'll take it and fill this one up with the finished ones when it's done it'll look something like this this one I was still getting the router set up but something like that here we go all right welcome back so I got most of my blocks cut here. I got them notched on two sides, and they're all cut to the same length. So what I'm doing now is I got this garbage bag laid out on my work table here. And I got a couple boards clamped down square so that I have something to push my pattern into to keep it square. And then I'm taking all the finished faces and putting them down so that they all land flush because some of these boards are different heights. So I'm putting all the finished faces down and just stacking up my pattern here, gluing them up one at a time. I'll show you how I'm doing it. 
put one bead of glue in the tongue or the groove and one on the back side. This would be the face. I'm not putting any glue there because I don't want it to ooze out. And then I have one joining surface. So I get two dots there. I just stick it on. Do that about 300,000 times and we'll have ourselves a sweet table. Just keep gluing blocks together until I get a big enough piece that I can cut it out and finish it into a table. Alright, so it's the next day. Uh, I got all my blocks laid out and glued together here. Uh, what I did first is I had just a regular kitchen garbage bag and I put down my work table so that any of the glue dripping through wouldn't get stuck to the work table. So then I work a pattern together, which is basically just two blocks end to end like that. And you just keep repeating the pattern over and over again. And that's the herringbone pattern. So I've let this all set up overnight. Now I'm just adding on a couple more blocks to get to the right width of about 24 inches of what I want for my coffee table here. And I'm going to cut the table here at the shortest points and add this couple of nice long pieces of trim that I got and add those onto the sides to trim it up. And then we're going to cut the end here and turn the edge of the table down and make a single leg going down and then we'll have two wire legs on the other side. So good glued up here. I'll show you how I glued them up. It's just regular tight bond wood glue. I got these mixed together. I got interior and exterior. I'm using them both. Put that one on backwards. I think I've had too much of this pattern. So I'm not putting any glue on the very lower edge because that's the finished edge. I don't want too much glue to be coming out. I don't know where I'm going to do the finished sanding and stuff. So we're just putting it in the groove and the tongue and then on the back side. And then I'll give it a couple dots on the end. cups work pretty nice. They're all fitting together pretty easy. I made this slot a little bit bigger than it needed to be here to fit that. So I wouldn't have any problem. This is basically how I glue the whole table together without any clamps. Unless you really need it. Just tight 
long wood glue is pretty tacky and it gets some pressure on it, it'll stick pretty good right away. pretty much done with the block phase. And now I'm going to let this set up and cut the edges off. Alright, so this is pretty much wrapped up. This power planer did an excellent job cutting the surfaces down. It's nice and smooth now. I just got a couple lines I need to get out with the belt sander. But before I do any sanding, I'm going to cut this thing into a square shape and get it shape of the table before I do any more finish work. So let's square it up. Alright, now it's been about 40, 48 hours since I glued this up, <clears throat> what I'm now calling a slab. And I flipped it over so that the finished faces are all standing up now. So I got some pretty decent surfaces that I need to level off there as you can see it's not perfect so I started back here with my electric hand planer <clears throat> to have down here it's a craftsman maybe three inch hand planer and uh, I'm just gonna keep making light passes over this until I can get the surface close enough to level to sand it <clears throat> and then I'll square it up cut the edges off and I'll have some trim pieces for the sides and we'll keep on trucking here. Let's do some planing.
three. That blade shot. I got the table and the leg flipped over upside down in a jig here and clamped together for the spline miters. I have one glued up and inserted here and I'm cutting these out with a data blade that I got on an eight and a quarter inch circular saw and then I just push some of the bowling alley stock to the table saw over here and cut it down to a quarter inch so that it fits in here and uh, the first one I passed pretty sloppy here uh, it looks pretty kind of trashed it because I just tried to freehand it off the pencil lines and then the second one I used a razor knife and actually traced my spline on there with a razor blade and made a pass through there with the data. I'm having to make two passes because I can't stack up enough blades on this circular saw. I tried to stack it up as a quarter inch the first time and it just spun the nut off. So I just got a one blade on there and then a sixteenth little addition, a couple washers. So I'm making two passes through here and got this one nice and tight. You want to have it so that it stops right there at the edge of the miter and then when you fold the miter over it's going to butt into this one. We'll glue it up so it has a nice tight fit there and that's going to keep the table from coming open hopefully so we'll cut this one now Let these dry pretty significantly before I try to put the miter together. Come back and wrap. Alright, so I glued up my splines and got everything set up on there. Glued up the miter joint with some tight bond adhesive. And then I just put a couple framing squares on here and clamped the framing squares down. <coughs> and uh, used a rubber mallet to work the miter in get it as close as I can. Um, if I can't make it look good enough then I'll router it over a little bit. But pretty much got it clamped in here. I'm going to leave it for about 24 hours and let these 
lines dry up and I'm gonna put trim pieces on the sides I'm gonna have two legs made out of a steel wire big storm here power might go out Okay, I got two pieces of 3 8 by four foot long steel rod from Home Depot here. And I got a little scratch mark, the two foot in the center. These are gonna make up my legs for the other end of the table. So I'm gonna take these in on the anvil and heat this up with a torch and then bend it about 180 degrees or so. And then we'll drill some holes in the table so that we have a hoop coming out for legs. And I'll cut them the length so that the table's level. that for some table legs guys we made some pretty nice bends on the anvil there I'm pretty satisfied with those it's kind of how I pictured them to look I had them tied together so that they would come out to the same angle so now I have this t-square clamped on my waterfall leg which is going to represent the ground level and all I'm going to do is just hold these upside down get a mark on there it's going to be about an inch below the ground level so I'm going to drill them into the table about an inch inch and a half long cut them off I'll flip them over and figure out what kind of angle I want there and have ourselves some wire legs all right I got this leg installed here this will use a combination of this T square two foot level got it where I wanted it to the end of the table and then I found the exact size of the drill bit that was just tight enough for this rod and then I traced the angle of the rod on this block here set it next to the cut and also got some layout lines on the bottom of the table so that I could drill that hole right at the angle that I wanted and uh, it's pretty tight in there. It doesn't even need a glue or anything. So do the other side. All right, well, if there was going to be a significant moment of truth on this project, this would be it. The glue's had significant time to dry. My miter, I got my legs are on here, all planted down in there. I actually took a level, made sure that they were level across. So now all it's left to do is flip it over and see if it stays together trim out the sides and do some more finishing work. But, uh, let's see what happens.
flipped it and it lived. Now we just gotta do some trim on the sides here, down the face, and we're gonna do some sanding and staining next. And I should say clear coat because I'm not gonna get any stain going on. But uh, yeah, we're gonna trim the sides out here. Just gotta rearrange my garage a little bit, move this table saw out, and start cutting some trim. Well, I skipped ahead a little bit on you guys here and did all the trim, sanding, wood filler work, and I sprayed it, and now it's pretty much done and drying up. Uh, as you can see, I put some trim around the edges there and clamped it, put it in with a couple finished nails down the side and down the face to match. I wood glued that on and clamped it, let it dry overnight. And then once I had the trim on, I got to work on surfacing it. And I did it with a belt sander with 80 grit. And then once I leveled everything mostly, I came in with 80 grit on a palm sander. And then I progressively worked up from 80 to 120 to 220, 320, 400, 600, and then 1200 by hand. And then I sprayed it with some Minwax. Let's see what this Hellsman Spar. Spar urethane. This is, uh, I chose this specifically because it's resistant to sunlight and it won't fade or anything. So, we got a pretty good sop and wet coat on there now. I think I'm just going to try to go with one coat. Uh, let it dry up and see how it looks. If there's any light areas, I'll go back over it, but pretty much that's it. That concludes our herringbone table. Uh, I'm going to unwrap these legs. I'm just going to leave those bare metal. And I uh, did spray the inside back. I also sanded that with some 80 grit. I just kind of got a shot on that so that you wouldn't be looking at that ugly backside so much. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, Definitely, if you guys like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. If you want to see more do-it-yourself construction type videos, make sure and subscribe. I'm always up to something different here. Also, I do a lot of Volvo videos, so if you guys are into Volvos and you came to see the table, then we'll be getting back to Volvos pretty soon. But yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments. Love to hear from you guys about what you think on the table or if you have any questions about what I did. Um, yeah, I'd love to share with you guys. Thank you for watching.